Before we begin, this video is part of the regular Twisted Visions video challenge. I'd first like to thank Tony of T-Rocks for allowing me to be part of this awesome collaborative opportunity with some talented Brisbane video creators, and to Rob from Walkabout with Rob for bringing it to my attention. Now please go and check out their YouTube channels if you haven't already, and please also send a follow to the other contributors of this video challenge. Alright, now let's get to it. Brisbane is a unique city. While it often gets compared to Melbourne, Sydney or Adelaide, it still holds its own. And it's been ranked along the likes of Barcelona, Singapore and Miami as a global city. When you begin to travel to different cities around Australia and even around the world, you begin to grieve over some things that your home city never had. And from my own experiences, what's one thing that I believe Brisbane severely lacks compared to other cities? Decent public transport. Right, here we go. As much as Brisbane has progressed in recent years, its public transport system still has a lot of catching up to do. How many of you were late to work because you missed your train or bus and had to wait up to half an hour for the next one? How many of you had to sleep under a dirty staircase somewhere in Fortitude Valley because all public transport stopped at midnight? How long did you wait for the Redcliffe train line? How many of your great grandparents gave up waiting for it? And how many of you wish Brisbane's trams came back? According to a Climate Council survey in July of this year, Brisbane's access to public transport has been ranked as some of the worst in Australia compared to the other state capitals. The report showed that two-thirds of Greater Brisbane residents do not have access to regular all-day public transport services, and that access to good public transport across Brisbane is limited to mostly the city's central region. Common complaints are often levelled at the proximity of a train or bus stop, or the lack thereof, the lack of 24-hour weekend services, bus rides enduring inner-city congestion, and Brisbane not having a turn-up-and-go service, meaning long waits between trains and buses. For much of my adult life, I found the easiest way to get around Brisbane was with a car. However, a great number of Brisbane locals also have the same idea, and as a result, our city has a huge traffic congestion problem. Brisbane is ranked as the most congested city in Australia, and according to this year's INREX Global Traffic Reports, it ranks number 12 in a list of most congested cities in the world. So you see this footage here? I went to a stock footage site, typed in traffic jam, and this was the first thing that came up. That's how, that's how infamous our congestion is. It's so bad it made it onto a stock media website. So let's take a moment to compare our public transport system to other cities. Melbourne, for example, has its trains and its well-known tram service. There's almost always a railway or tram stop within walking distance, and there are even bus services that run for 24 hours on weekends catering to the city's ever-present nightlife. Let's take a look at Berlin. This city has four modes of public transport, the trains, the U-Bahn or underground, trams and buses. Both rail services run virtually 24 hours a day. There's almost always a station or stop within a few minutes of walking distance, and if you miss your train or get out at the wrong station, no problem. There'll be another one in just a minute or two. And as a result of Berlin's prolific public transport systems, car traffic within the city's roads is considerably very light. That's German for doors closing, please stand clear. So what are some of the underlying reasons why Brisbane's public transport leaves so much to be desired? Well, one reason is the design and how it developed over time. Unlike Berlin, Brisbane's train system runs in a hub and spoke model, which doesn't allow for much connectivity between directions. By contrast, Berlin's railway network operates in a ring, allowing for better east-west connectivity. Let's say you had to get from Petrie to, I don't know, Arana Hills. You'll have to take the Petrie line inbound towards the city centre, then take the next route bound for Ferny Grove from either Central Station or any inner connecting train station, then you might need to take a bus from Groveley Station to the main civic area of Arata Hills, or just take a rideshare, which is gonna cost you more. Brisbane's railway lines were first developed from 1875, with buses and tram services developed 10 years later. Brisbane's tram service grew to be quite successful. Residents could take a tram from the city centre to as far as Ashgrove or Camp Hill, and throughout the day, each Brisbane tram route will be serviced by a tram every 10 minutes or so. 
Over the years, Brisbane's railway system expanded incrementally, with new branch lines being added and routes extending as far as Laidley and Debra. However, by 1930, the city had a population of just over 310,000 people compared to Sydney and Melbourne, both of which had already cracked the 1 million mark. Brisbane, by contrast, was the large country town compared to its southern counterparts, and to build a railway network at the scale of Sydney or Melbourne may not have been economically viable. Many of the rural branch lines out of the city were already experiencing low patronage. After World War II, Brisbane experienced a housing boom, which led to further extensions of its tram network. However, this new urban sprawl came with a side effect the development of suburban precincts and facilities, which reduced the need to do something like your shopping in the city. This and the growing affordability of cars would have a profound impact on the railway and tram systems, with several of the state railway branch lines closing down in 1950. When Clem Jones became Lord Mayor in 1961, much of his focus was on creating more infrastructure for the rising use of motor transport. This included new bus services, which Jones argued added more flexibility than rail and trams. Brisbane, like Melbourne, still has its trams, but how long will they last? Opinion in the Queensland capital seems to be that the trams will be replaced by buses as they have been in other Australian capitals. The tramway system overhead wiring is also used to operate a small number of trolley buses. They'd be doomed too if the trams disappear. It would be the end of an era. The 1962 Paddington Tram Depot fire put a profound strain on the tram system, with 20% of Brisbane's fleet destroyed. Numerous conspiracy theories have floated around hinting that maybe the depot fire was deliberately lit to try and usher in the transition of trams to buses. The following year after the fire, several of Brisbane's tram lines were closed down. These closures continued until Brisbane's last tram took to the tracks on Sunday the 13th of April 1969. While Brisbane's population continued to grow over the years, much focus has been maintained on developing infrastructure for the city's motor transport, including buses, not so much on rail. Some of these projects over the years have included the Riverside Bridges and Expressways, the Inner City Bypass, and Brisbane's numerous tunnels. The removal of Brisbane's tram service, and whether it should return or not, is still a hot point of discussion today. Many of Australia's major cities have been rolling out modern tram and light rail services, Canberra having recently joined the ranks in 2019, along with Newcastle and the Gold Coast having recently added services. And there have been numerous proposals since the 1990s to bring the trams back to Brisbane, even this year. Remnants of Brisbane's tram network can be found on Old Cleveland Road, and some of Brisbane's old trams are showcased at the Ferny Grove Tramway Museum. Today, there are obviously more environmental and economical reasons why many people favour public transport over motor transport. These days, as Brisbane holds a population of nearly 2.5 million, you could argue that there's now more demand for better public transport, but not enough supply to meet it. But there may be some hope on the horizon. There's the upcoming Cross River Rail service, which aims to alleviate some of the inner city traffic bottlenecks. In 2010, there were talks of a Brisbane subway system linking the airport to the western suburbs of Tawong via Balimba. With the upcoming Olympics, I think they need to bring this one back out. But what is arriving this year is the new Metro service. The Brisbane Metro is an electric-powered turn-up-and-go bus service that has been promised to alleviate some of the city's public transport issues and traffic bottlenecks. It has a dedicated suburban route from north to south with planned extensions and will operate a 24-hour service on weekends. And as an aesthetic bonus, it kind of looks like a tram. This may very well be a good step in the right direction for Brisbane's public transport. So while there might be some hope for Brisbane's public transport yet, let's now have a talk about how the city lacks dedicated bicycle lanes on the roads compared to most European cities. Uh, we'll be here all day. All right, I just want to say thanks again to Tony from T-Rocks and to Rob from Walkabout with Rob for getting me in on the Twisted Visions project. This has been a lot of fun. If you liked this video, please subscribe to the channel and please check out the other YouTube channels from the contributors of Twisted Visions. I'm sure they'd really appreciate the follows. Anyway, until next time, cheers.